Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the newest generation for the Ford Mustang Mach 1. Huge shout out to Ulta Auto Group for providing this muscle car for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. They have a ton of awesome pre-owned inventory. That link is down in the description. The Mach 1 that you see behind me is finished off in fighter jet gray. It has the handling package and they have an MSRP right around $68,000. And to start off today's review, we're going to take a look at what powers this Mach 1. Underneath the hood is the 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission. This pumps out 470 horsepower around 7200 RPM and 410 pound feet of torque around 4800 RPM. That power is sent to the rear wheels. This weighs in right around 3,700 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in just under four seconds with a top speed of 168 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 16 gallons. You'll expect to see around 15 miles per gallon in the city and 23 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 107.1. Its overall length is 188.5. It has a width of 75.4 and a height of 54.3 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Mustang Mach 1, this is basically a blend between the bullet trim level and the GT350. Both of those do not offer the automatic transmission, so if you'd like that vehicle and you want the automatic, this is the perfect blend to get that styling as well as that transmission option. So up front, this has the classic Mustang design with the front grille, very narrow and wide with the pony badge right in the center, finished off in gloss black. There are a lot of cutouts to provide cooling to this engine, as well as having both of these circle inlets on both sides. Now they do have a hard backing, they are not functional. I think airflow can maybe get through them, but it just gives it a really cool design. This has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. The DRLs have a really cool three bar design on the inside of the housing, with the turn signal just below that, with some more trims surrounding them, even more cutouts down in the lower section. And this has a massive front splitter. You can see that adds a lot of inches, a lot more downforce as well. It just gives it a really cool look. The Mach 1 logo is in the front of the hood, as well as having the black and the orange stripe running down it. There are functional vents on both sides of the hood as well. Really nice lines that run down it, just to tie in that front end very nicely. I love all the contoured lines that give it that classic Mustang design. Moving to the side now, this has a set of 19 inch wheels. They're 10 and a half inches wide up front, 11 inches wide in the rear. They have a dark finish to them, which matches this fighter jet gray, and the calipers are finished off in orange. This has six pistons up front with single pistons in the rear. There's the Mach 1 badge, more of the black and orange. Gives it a really cool theme. Cool line running at the height of the door handle too, a very crisp line. There is no sunroof for this model but it has that classic sports car design with that steeply raked rear glass. And then with the handling package, you get this massive trunk mounted wing that has plenty of cutouts in the lower section so that air can get channeled below them with a lip on the upper section. This has a backup camera with all the parking sensors. LED taillights have a sequential design to them, very iconic for the Mustang, and they have a 3D shape to them too. The quad active exhaust is down below as well as the reverse light. Even more cutouts in that diffuser just to provide some more cooling and better aerodynamics. And that is a look at the exterior for this Mach 1. Let's move on to the cargo space because this is a daily driving vehicle. There's a button up underneath, which is very convenient to have. And with the trunk open, there is plenty of space to make this a practical daily. There's a speaker on the passenger side, a little bit of room over on that driver's side. If I lift up the floor, you can put a spare. It looks like it is deleted. There is a spare tire kit. You could use this for additional storage or maybe put a spare there if you wanted to. Now the back seats do not fold down as you'll see here soon why. And then there's no grab handle so I can just grab the slip and easily close that trunk. This does have remote start so I wanted to show that if you lock the vehicle, double tap on this button. This will fire right up. Really awesome feature to have. If you double tap that button, you can shut the vehicle off for whatever reason. And then you can also double tap this button to open up that trunk lid if you need to. So with the vehicle locked now, all I need to do is place my hand on the door handle. Hovering your finger over those lines will lock it, of course. The door panel has a really nice design. There's black leather along with all the stitching. Chrome on the one side of the grab handle. A little bit of storage space down below. All the window controls and side mirror adjustments are just above that. With some black surrounding the chrome release handle as well as lock and unlock. 
Mach 1 is also down on the door sill. And then making our way to the non-existent back seats. This has the back seat delete, which is a couple hundred dollar option. There is a sticker right in the middle that shows you no one can sit back here, but they still have that same design to them. Obviously you are not using the back seats in this whatsoever. There's no seat belts or anything like that, but you could use this for additional storage space. Since the back seats do not fold down like they normally would if you had back seats, you can throw in backpacks, whatever items you may have. So it is usable for those aspects. You are hopefully going to be tracking this car and these Recaro seats are manual adjusting. So I've had to move them. We have that bar up underneath to slide them forwards and backwards, recline and incline, as well as the height adjustment. And then you can store the seatbelt here just to have that nicely placed. Recaro is right in the middle, as well as the cutouts. Really nice leather seats with all of the stitching. And it's time to hop into the front. It's a low car, so you sink right in. The steering wheel is finished off in solid black. We have a lot of hand controls. On the left side is all the volume, as well as cruise control. Right side, all these will control the center gauge screen, which we'll come back to. There's even shortcuts for navigation and music, along with settings and your Bluetooth. And then we have the Pony logo right there, which I'll show here once we start this up. But with my foot on the brake, we have that button over on the right side. We can bring this to life. Coming back to the digital gauge cluster, on the left side is the tack and the engine temperature, on the right side is the miles per hour and the fuel level, and right in the middle you can go through a lot more info using these arrows. So if I scroll down, there's trip information to monitor, there's fuel economy along with the TPMS. Now if I push on settings in the lower left, that will pull up all this information here that you can toggle through as well. I can push on navigation where you can go to home, destinations along with your favorites, anything close by. If I push on music, you can see the radio adjust, and then by pushing on the Pony logo, you can go through a, a lot more settings here. You have my mode, which is basically what you can configure. There's the exhaust mode, where you can go from quiet, normal, sport, and track, which is pretty neat to be able to have. There's track apps to go into. You can look at your acceleration timer, your brake performance, line lock, which is basically doing a burnout, even a lap timer as well. And there's also gauges that you can see too. So it's pretty cool to have all of that in that digital gauge cluster. Now being the automatic, this does have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, along with the trim that surrounds the three spoke design. Over on the left side is the headlight adjustments as well as a dimmer switch for the gauges. Really nice brush trim piece surrounding that. This does have a Bang & Olufsen sound system, so you'll see that logo up front. There's also some more gauges right in the middle with an air vent on both sides. And the custom Mach 1 chassis badge is over above the airbag. Now right in the middle, this has the SYNC 3 touchscreen system. The lower section has all the presets like audio and climate, so you can quickly go into there and adjust all of those settings. This even has a heated steering wheel too. You can get into the phone as well as pull up the navigation and full screen if you need to use that. There's different apps to go into and then all the general settings that you can monitor all this information. So it's a nice amount of information to have for a sports car like this, a muscle car like this that is meant for the track. There's a few audio controls right in the middle as well as power and volume for the radio. Tuning is on that right side. And then all the climate adjustments are nicely laid out with the fan speed. Temperature dials are on both sides along with recirc, defrosters. And then at the very bottom, we have a cool row of these toggles. So on the far right, clicking on this mode, you can go through the different driving modes. There's normal, sport plus. There's also track where you can see the entire tack changes, drag strip, which you do have to go into, of course, by hitting OK. There's also snow and wet. So depending on how you drive this, you have a few different modes, as well as having a few different modes for the steering wheel. There's normal, sport, and comfort. So that's cool to see. There's traction control as well as the hazards. A little bit of storage space with a 12 volt and a USB. And then being the 10 speed automatic, the trigger is on the top. I can put it back into reverse where you'll see the backup camera up here along with the guidelines if you need to. You can go into drive and then sport mode is how you can use the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. There are two cup holders just behind that along with some ambient lighting in the lower section. This has the manual parking brake and then right in the middle, a little bit of storage in the center armrest as well as it having a USB and a 12 volt. And then over on the glove box, plenty of room for all the information that needs to go there. We'll take one last look at these seats. They have a really nice design to them. And then the dome lights are up in the middle. As we get behind the wheel of this Mustang Mach 1 now, just giving it a mild acceleration and this is quick. 
Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Mach 1 is basically a blend between the bullet trim level and the GT350. So you're getting the exterior styling with the performance characteristics for this Mach 1. I think it's a nice blend. And what it offers that the other two trim levels do not is the 10 speed automatic. So I am a huge fan of the manual transmissions. If you want the GT350 or the bullet, they only come with the manual. However, if you're not a three pedal kind of person, you just want something that you can just hop in, drive. Maybe you can take this to the drag strip to get some quicker times. And with another mild acceleration, Now this vehicle has some miles on it, so it's well past its braking period, but I'm still not doing anything too crazy today. This is a quick car, and there's really not that many options on it. It's a pretty basic interior, as you've already seen in today's video. So if you just want pretty much a track vehicle that you can still daily drive, we still have AC, all of those accommodations, this is a pretty cool option. Now, I'm not sure if the camera can see, but my brother is behind me in the identical spec with the six-speed manual. So if you wanna see how the manual performs, check out that video as well. Pretty crazy that we are in two similar VIN number vehicles. These rolled off the lot one after the other. They are that close in uh, production. Ooh, it's quick. I love how quick these shifts are. And it's definitely loud. Now, if I go to the exhaust mode real quick, I'll go to uh, quiet. As you would expect, it gets quiet. We have the quiet startup too. So you can have your track focused car and not annoy your neighbors by starting it up and then put it into sport or track. And you have a pretty fun vehicle. Now, aside from the performance aspects, this is just like driving any other Mustang, really. We have the adaptive suspension, so or the magnetic suspension, I should say, and it's pretty comfortable. You could absolutely daily drive this. If you want something a little bit more practical, maybe don't delete the rear seats, which I think is only like a $200 option, so I'd probably keep them. If you wanna take them out later and save some weight, do that instead. And now as we switch over to the POV angle behind the wheel of this Mustang Mach 1, We'll take a look at visibility real quick before we have a perfect road for a small acceleration. So over this shoulder, really not much of a pillar in no seats as you already saw. Over left shoulder, pretty easy to see. There is that small window in the back, but from second gear, here we go. The shifts are pretty quick, like I mentioned earlier. So if you do want the automatic, it's a nice transmission to go with. Personally, I would opt for the manual transmission, but this is going to be a quicker car, especially if you're drag racing it, or you're just not a fan of the manual transmission. You know, it's not everybody's taste. Unfortunately, manuals are becoming more scarce, but it's awesome to see that Ford is still offering the manual for anybody who wants to go with that option and putting in the automatic for those who want to go with the automatic option. I do wish there was a little bit more tech. We have the Sync 3 touchscreen system. I know they're out with Sync 4, which is a little bit larger, uh, but for this vehicle, I think it's pretty adequate with what you can get. And everything else, there's a little bit of plastic on the door panels, but everything else is what you'd expect for a Mustang. And really, you're paying more for the performance of this model and still getting a nice interior with some really nice features. putting it into the uh, sport steering. The Mustang can take a turn. <laughs> we have the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires as well. So these are very, very grippy. You wouldn't want to take this out in the rain. So if you do uh, happen to daily this, maybe consider another set of tires or just be careful when you're out on the rain or out in the rain. But that's going to wrap it up for this walk around review and test drive behind the wheel of the Mustang Mach 1. Once again, huge shout out to Alta Auto Group for providing this muscle car for me today. Check out their website, that info is down in the description. Give the video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.